Hey, Salvador Brickman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk all about crowdfunding. And specifically today, I want to get into the comparison between doing a Facebook fundraiser and raising money on GoFundMe. Which one is going to be a good fit for you? That's what I'm covering today. So let's get right into this. When it comes to prices, let's just start first getting in here because it's going to really vary depending on Facebook. So with Facebook fundraisers, you can see my screen here. Um, it's going to be different depending on if you're raising money for a charitable organization or if you're raising money for a personal fundraiser. So if you come here to the Facebook fundraiser page, you can either raise money for a nonprofit organization or you can raise money for yourself, a friend, or a business. Now, when you raise money, obviously, for a nonprofit, it has to be a 501c3 verified nonprofit organization. In this case, Facebook will not assess any kind of fees. However, if you're raising money for yourself or a business or a friend, this falls under the realm of being a personal fundraiser. And this is going to vary based on where you are in the world. So it would cost me 2.60% plus 30 cents there um, in terms of US dollars. So this is basically the fee that's charged only for personal fundraisers. And it's meant to carry you know, some of the um, costs that come with doing the payment processing. And also some of the fees include additional taxes there. So this, this is different because with a Facebook fundraiser, basically the person who's running the fundraiser is assessed that fee. Now, what ends up happening you know, if you're doing a nonprofit, that's a little bit different. You can have people around the world who are raising money for you and basically then um, directing those funds to you. However, for the vast majority of people, if you're trying to do your own fundraiser, that is how it's going to work. Um, and, and also, it's going to be a little bit more complicated when it comes to the taxes and these different things for you personally. Now, the difference here with GoFundMe is that if you go on GoFundMe and you run a online fundraising campaign, actually, you're not going to have to pay any money, um, you know, aside from like basic credit card processing. You're not gonna have to pay a percentage of the funds that you've raised. It used to be that way, but it's not that way anymore. So the way that it's different now is you'll actually be assessed a fee once the person checks out. And that's gonna be an optional fee, basically. It's, it's more of a donation. So basically, if we look here on this page, this is a virtual Everest 2020 support the Sherpas campaign. They've already raised $7,000. When you go here and you say, I want to donate to this um, fundraiser and you enter your donation amount, let's just say that I end up donating, let's go here, I end up donating $11.00. They then suggest a tip for their services. So GoFundMe is a 0% platform fee for organizers, but for the person who's donating, they ask you to give them a little bit of a tip. And that's about 10% there, or you can change it to 5% or 15%, or you can say none. The way that GoFundMe is able to support their operations is through these individual little tips that are assessed when someone is checking out. It's actually going to then be your donors who are effectively powering the website GoFundMe. So with Facebook fundraisers, um, the actual person who is running the fundraiser is going to be assessed a fee, which is likely you who's watching this video. Uh, with, a, with a GoFundMe fundraiser, your donors are going to be asked to basically contribute to GoFundMe, which will then maintain their operation. So it's just a different way of kind of doing the billing, if that makes sense. One of the other differences that I kind of want to look at here is the way that fundraisers are discovered, right? So you can go to the fundraiser page and you can discover some really interesting nonprofit causes, the ones that are popular on Facebook. And typically, these are for some kind of an established nonprofit organization. It's pretty rare where you see like a personal fundraiser kind of trending in that way, unless it's a celebrity or there's a lot of acceleration. This person is really like noteworthy, right? So there isn't really as much, um, I would say, clout or ability to, to be seen here. Like this is David Guetta, you know, the musician, obviously. This is um, devastating West Bengal and Odisha regions. This is more of like a, a, a nonprofit kind of a raise um, when it comes to like loose change busker, COVID-19 fundraiser for the World Health Organization. Right? These are very big fundraisers. That's $10 million. It's kind of hard for you to compete as an individual. And then, of course, you have the other way, which is your fundraiser is discovered, which is through your friends and family. 
So I have some friends who have run like birthday fundraisers basically for different causes. And that's a really common way for people to come across your fundraiser is they see one of their friends are doing this and also the other friends that are supporting it. Now, the, the problem with that is, it's, it, I mean, it's awesome. I think it's, it's great and it's something that can really be used very effectively, but it also limits your exposure just to Facebook and it also limits your exposure just to your kind of your own circle of friends. So the chances of someone randomly stumbling upon on your campaign is a lot less when it comes to a Facebook fundraiser, unless it's shared by a friend of a friend of a friend. And that's just how Facebook works, right? It's all about network effects and making sure that um, Facebook is encouraging the posts to be shared that other people want to see. When it comes to GoFundMe, there are a few ways that people can discover your actual campaign. So of course, you can see here that there are social shares when it comes to this particular campaign. So people will basically come to it if they like it and they donate they can also click this little share button and they can share it on Facebook, Twitter, email, WhatsApp, or they can print it out and maybe display it in a location that's going to be really prominent in their local community. So there, it goes beyond just one network there. You know, it goes into these other ones. And also email is incredibly still powerful nowadays as a way to continue to keep up with your friends and family. And typically, if you're getting an email from a friend, you're going to open that. So email is also very powerful. Of course, WhatsApp is something that like is used all around the world as a very common form of communication, particularly when your friends and family are in different um, countries, right? And you want to communicate without paying super high text messages and such. You can also copy and paste this fundraising link in Instagram, etc. So it really doesn't limit you to one particular platform. The other way that people can discover you is when they're going here on this main page and you can see some of the top fundraisers. Um, for example, the George, George Floyd Memorial. Um, you can see here some other ones. This one raised $1 million. Uh, so you can raise money for yourself, for a friend, or for charity. And this is kind of similar to, to Facebook. So as a charity, you can also raise money or you can raise money on behalf of one. But you can also, of course, do it for yourself. So I want to draw your attention a little bit here to, you can also browse through, for example, medical fundraising, right? So these are by different categories that are on GoFundMe. And depending on the category, you're going to have different levels of competition, different numbers of people that are trying to raise money for different causes, right? So, but you can be discovered in these categories by strangers who are browsing the website. So if we come here, you can look here at some of the um, statistics, like 650 million is raised per year just for medical fundraisers on GoFundMe. You can see some of the trending ones. So like this person who's raising money, um, really heartfelt image right there. Other people are raising $17,000 to help fight against hate crime, et cetera. Um, blood cancer, medical support. So you, your fundraiser, if it starts to get some funding, will begin to show up as a trending um, basically as a trending campaign. In addition, there is GoFundMe's social media and email list, right? So with their social media, all the time they're sharing stories, they're sharing um, things that are important. Think about it. If you could actually get shared on their social media, that's a whole other way for you to then be discovered and to have your campaign be discovered. So they're doing things like, um, you know, drawing support to We Stand Together, supporting justice and equality. They're promoting articles. They're talking about one of um, their individuals' fundraiser campaigns, and they're sharing stories. They also have other things like they have pot. They have a podcast. GoFundMe has a podcast. Um, they have, you know, an Instagram. So a lot of ways for supporters to discover new causes, as well as an email newsletter where they can send that thing out and highlight some of the top campaigns. So I'd say one of the major differences, aside from the, the fees, right, is the fact that GoFundMe also is a network. And by being a part of it, you can also gain some exposure within that actual platform. And in that way, you can meet other strangers and get those strangers interested kind of in what it is you're doing. They'll stumble on your page and you'll get some donations. If you have something I think that's noteworthy, in particular, if you can get the actual website to highlight you in any kind of meaningful way. The final thing I kind of want to go through really quickly is just the look and feel of these fundraisers because that that's all about conversions. You know, if you have a hundred people that come to the page, depending on the look and feel, the conversions can be very different. So I kind of want to talk about that a little bit here. Let's first look at uh, Facebook. So this is just a very simple birthday fundraiser for Equal Justice Initiative. 
First of all, you'll notice there is an image here, which you can highlight. You can see the person who created this. Um, and some frequently asked questions when it comes to things like fees, how do taxes work, can you donate privately? The other thing that you'll see here though is that as I'm scrolling down, you can also see some of the other asks as well. So it's a very busy kind of interface. You know, you have your messages, you have people trying to contact you, you have friends that you can of course invite to the fundraiser. I do really like that functionality, but also you can look at some of the updates where people are conversing about this particular cause, how much is it you would like to donate, and also the, the you know the reason why this person is doing it so you can kind of look through all of the different donations that have happened and this is this is incredible social proof in my opinion it's a really uh, cool way that if you're a fundraiser you can show other people like you actually care about this cause and care about this campaign so the i would say from the benefit standpoint it really benefits from the facebook network effects easy to invite friends easy to donate um, very simple. You can also invite people via email if you'd like to. You know, they're, they're obviously probably not. They're not really encouraging you to share it, like on on you know Twitter and these other networks. They're trying to keep you obviously in Facebook, but at the same time, you could always share a specific link on other platforms. And finally, some some simple questions that people might be asking. Very easy to answer those, and you can see a lot of social proof. So I think. Facebook has done an incredible job of really ramping up this whole um, fundraiser section. My only criticism would be that it is a very busy interface and a lot of things can really catch your attention here to take you. You're looking at this fundraiser and you're like, eh, maybe I'll donate, maybe I won't. And then you go and check out another one or then you go and start replying to your friend. You start clicking around. It's very easy to get lost. Um, that's my only criticism of the Facebook fundraiser functionality. Now let's take a look at GoFundMe's functionality and kind of compare that a little bit with just the look and feel of Facebook. So looking at GoFundMe, um, this is for a virtual dollar dance fundraiser. This was in the wedding section of GoFundMe. And this campaign has already raised about $7,000. Um, it doesn't have any social shares, but it has about 19 donors and 64 followers. Some really big donations here, like 500 bucks, 200 bucks, $500. The first thing I notice is like Facebook, there is this ability to either have an image or embed a YouTube video if you want to on GoFundMe. You can as easily you know, embed a YouTube video obviously on Facebook because they, like, they prefer their own um, video platform. But when it comes to GoFundMe, you'll notice first of all the title and then the image and you also see how much has been raised, right? That's really where my eye is being caught and also the donate and the share now button. The one thing that I'm not noticing is that there aren't all these other like extraneous links, right? So it's not as asking me to go and check out some other fundraisers here on the left. It's not, you know, I'm not competing for attention with my friend's messages. This is really about taking the time to actually figure out what is this fundraiser about. You have a little bit of a bio there. You can donate or you can share it if you want. And you can see um, some of the other stuff there, like the GoFundMe guarantee, which is you can, in the rare case, get your donation refunded if you want to. There's some expert advice questions there. And I would say that one of the big other things here is, you know, it's very simple, um, to the point, and very direct. You're either going to check out this, read this information, and you're either going to donate or you're not going to donate. It's almost like it's so, you know, they have, there's that saying that, you can't really fool a shark. Like a shark is just like, it's going in one direction or it's not. You know, it's, it's like too too dumb to fool kind of a shark. But with this, it's like, it's very no brainer. You're either gonna support this or you're not. You're gonna go and check out some other thing. And I kind of like the way that that page is optimized. So what I like about this um, dashboard is the fact that it's just, it's very easy. It's very simple. It's almost like, almost kind of like childproof, you know, I guess I use that term, but it's almost in that way difficult to not know what to do, right? You're coming to that page, you're either going to support it or you're not. It's a very clear binary decision. Whereas with Facebook, there's a lot of other things um, that could be drawing your attention. And thus you might be sometimes a little bit confused or you might go and do something else. This is a very simple, like you're gonna support it or you're gonna not. It's almost like a no brainer. In my opinion, like those are the major um, top three comparisons that you wanna be thinking about when you're going into creating an online crowdfunding campaign for a charitable reason, for yourself or for a beneficiary of some kind. So you now know a little bit about the fees, the interface, and um, kind of, I guess, the power when it comes to Facebook versus GoFundMe. Now, there are a lot of other variables that you can take into account, 
And also, if you want to, you could, of course, do a Facebook fundraiser and do a GoFundMe fundraiser. The only difference, I think, here is that when you are doing a Facebook fundraiser, it is very personal. All of your friends are going to see that you're announcing this versus when you're doing a GoFundMe, it's also on another platform. So you can decide whether or not you want to share this with your friends or you want to keep this relegated to maybe um, you know a tribe that you're already a part of. Or you want to raise it for a very specific reason or a cause. You don't want to introduce it to all of your Facebook friends. You can send that direct message much more easily um, for a GoFundMe campaign when it comes to doing that kind of more private raise, if that makes any kind of sense. I got a lot of other great videos out there showing you how to run a online crowdfunding campaign, some of the tidbits, the best ways to raise money for a nonprofit, and also when it comes to GoFundMe, just a breakdown of how the whole platform works. So go and check out some of the other videos I got out there. Um, I have a free course on GoFundMe, which I will link up down below, as well as I wrote the book, Crowdfunding Personal Expenses, which has a paperback, Amazon, and Audible version, which is a really easy place to get started. But there is a way to raise more money when it comes to these campaigns. And I try and share that for you with these free YouTube videos, as well as with some of my more premium content. I hope you take a lot of value out of it. My name is Salvador Brigman. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.